Install Arch Linux on a separate drive without using a USB drive. I have two SSDs here and have Windows on my first drive and will install Arch Linux on my second drive to keep them separate. I don't need to use the entire second drive for Arch Linux. I'm just going to use some free space on it and we'll use that for Arch. So I'm going to download Arch. I'm going to archlinux.org. Going to download. Scroll down and pick a mirror, or you could just pick the worldwide mirror. After it's done downloading, going into my downloads folder, and I'm going to mount it. You can hit enter or right click and mount, and this will make it available as a virtual drive. All right, and I have the contents here, and it's on the H drive. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this onto a separate partition on my second SSD drive. So I'm going to go into disk management. And so this is disk zero, my first SSD drive, and this is disk one, my second SSD drive. And here is Arch Linux that was just mounted. So I'm going to make some space on my second SSD drive. I'm going to shrink my existing D drive here. And my D drive just have some files here data, images, and the temp directory, but that's okay. So going back into disk management, I'm going to shrink the D drive to make room for the Arch Linux installation media, but also as well as for Arch Linux itself. So the Arch installation media, it's using 984 megabytes. So I'm going to use about 41 gigabytes, one gig for the installation media and 40 for Arch itself. Shrink. I'll do 41,000. Shrink and right click. New simple volume. Next. And I'll do 1,000. This will be for the Arch installation media. Next. Next. And I'll label it as Arch ISO and FAT32 as the file system. Next. And finish. Now I'm going to go into the H drive, copy everything, go to my new E drive and paste. All right, it's completed. Close. And so I no longer need the H drive here. So I'm going to right click, eject. And the Arch ISO partition here, your BIOS should be able to detect it and be able to boot from it. But if not, it may be because it needs to be recognized as an EFI system partition. So that can be done. I'm going to go into command prompt as administrator. I'm going to go into disk part. List my disk. Select disk one. List my partitions. Select partition two, the 1000 megabyte partition. I'm going to type in help set ID. And I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to get the EFI system partition value in hex. And then I'm going to set it, set ID equals and paste. And we see it's been set and if we go into disk management, we see it has been changed as well. So I'm going to now reboot my computer and go into the BIOS. All right, in my BIOS here, I have Secure Boot disabled. And in my boot options here, I have the Windows Boot Manager is number one, and boot option number two, the UFI OS. And the UFI OS is the Arch Linux installation media on my second drive. And I can confirm that by going back into Windows, opening up a command prompt as administrator, run bcd edit, forward slash enum firmware. And we see that there's the entry for it, labeled as UFI OS, and it's the E drive, and there's the EFI boot file. So I'll have to change the boot order here, and I'll have to have it boot into the UFI OS first, and then save changes and exit. All right, we can see it's booted the partition, and I'm going to select Arch Linux install medium. All right, it's booted into the shell. And the first thing I'm going to do is check to see if I have an IP address, IP space A. 
and I'm going to do the installation via my wired connection and the interface is ENP1S0 and I have an IP address so that's good. If I do a quick ping to Google it's successful. I'm going to clear my screen and I'm going to do fdisk-l. This will show my disks and the partitions. And so my first disk is dev SDA and it's 476 gigabytes. And then my second disk is dev SDB. And I'm going to be installing Arch on this disk. So now I'm going to partition SDB. Clear my screen. And you can partition it using F disk. Type an N to create a new partition. And it'll be partition number three. And the first sector is the default. And then this is going to be for my boot partition. And so I'll keep it as one gigabyte plus one G. And then the next partition, partition number four, enter. And then this is going to be my slash partition to make it simple. So I'm just going to have two partitions, the slash boot partition and slash. And this will use the remaining space and type in P to print. And so there are my two partitions, they've been created. And then W to write. I'm going to clear my screen. And now I'm going to run the Arch install script. Language English and then locale. Locale looks good. And then the mirrors. I'm going to select my mirror region. Go back. And then disk configuration, partitioning, manual partitioning. Select second disk. And then select partition number three. Enter. Assign the mount point as slash boot. Go back down. Mark on mark to be formatted. Go back down. Change file system to FAT32. Go down to SDB4. Assign the mount point slash. Go back down. Mark on mark to be formatted. Go back down and change file system to ext4. And then confirm and exit. Go back. And then disk encryption. I'm going to enable encryption. Lux. And then put in my password for disk encryption. And then the partitions. I'm going to select a slash. And then go back. And then swap. Would you like to use swap? On ZRAM, yes, which is the default. And then the bootloader, I'm going to have grub. And then my host name. Put in the root password. And then create a user. And yes, I want it to be a super user. Confirm and exit. Go to profile and then type and then desktop. And then for me, I am going to use KDE Plasma. Enter and graphics driver. For me, I have an AMD, so I'm going to be selecting that. And then go back. And then audio, selecting pipe wire. Kernel, going to leave it as the default. And network configuration, since I'm using Plasma, I'm going to be using the network manager. I'm going to additional packages. And you can put in any additional packages, but of course you can always install them afterwards. I'm going to hit escape to get out. And same goes for optional repositories. And then I'm going to select my time zone. And then NTP, it's enabled by default. And then install. Yes. And it's going to install and this will take a little bit of time. Would you like to chroot into the newly created installation and perform post-installation configuration? No, as I'm going to chroot the directories that I need myself. Type in fdisk-l and stb3 and stb4 are the partitions for my Arch Linux install. I'm going to clear my screen. Type in df-h and at the bottom slash mount slash arch install and slash mount slash arch install slash boots are the mount points. So now I'm going to manually mount the directories that I need. Dev, dev PTS, 
proc sys and run. And now I'm going to true root into it. Oh, I'm going to use bash. And I'm going to type in EFI boot manager just so I can see the EFI boot entries. This message just have to mount the variables so that they are available. And now run EFI boot manager. So I don't see Grub or Arch Linux here, so I'm going to fix that. I'm going to clear my screen, and you can just run the Grub install again. Grub install, target x86, 64, EFI, and then the EFI directory. And run EFI boot manager again. And we see Arch is there. So to get the dual boot working, I'm going to be using OS Prober to find Windows. I'm going to install OS Prober using Pacman, Package Manager. Yes. Type in OS Prober. And it's found Windows on my first drive. Now I'm going to edit the Etsy default grub file. I'm going to go to the bottom. And I'm going to remove the hash, the pound sign in front of grub disable OS Prober, so that grub can use OS Prober to detect Windows. Exit, Control X, save, yes, and enter. And now I'm going to run grub make config to make a new grub configuration file. All right, so it's found Windows as expected. And now I'm going to exit out of Detroit. And I'm going to run EFI Boot Manager again. So we see Arch at the top there, boot 0000. And the boot order has it to have it boot first, 0000. So it should go into Arch first. But I am going to reboot my computer and go into the BIOS just to confirm. All right, in my boot options here versus the UFI OS, second is the Windows Boot Manager, and third is Arch. Even though earlier we saw that it should be booted first, we see here that it's number three, so I have to change that and have Arch as first, and then save changes and exit. All right, Grub comes up as expected, and we got Arch Linux, and we got the Windows Boot Manager. So I'm going to go into Arch, and here it's asking for the passphrase to decrypt the root volume that was set earlier. And it's been decrypted, and it's now going to boot. And now I'm going to log in. All right, and now I'm logged in. And now I'm going to restart my computer to confirm that I can boot into Windows. Select Windows. All right, and it's loaded Windows, going to log in. And just one final note, going to go into Disk Management. And the 1000 megabytes partition here, which has the Arch install files, you can just keep this here. If you delete it, you'll likely run into a partition ordering issue, which will cause you unable to go into Arch, though it can be fixed. But to keep it simple, just keep this here. And also, if you ever need a live environment, you can just boot from it. So that's it. That's how you can install Arch Linux on a separate drive without using a USB drive. I hope this video was useful, and I thank you for watching. Bye now.